Welcome to Window Shop with Car and Driver. This is our 22nd episode, and this is the show where we shop for cars online. We give ourselves a challenge every week, and we start looking for listings online. And Pearlie, are your eyes closed? No. Not anymore. <laughs> oh, God. Welcome to the 22nd episode of Window Shop with Car and Driver, the show where we look for cars online and give ourselves a challenge and a budget every week to find cars that are listed online for sale, cars that we'd want to buy. This week, the challenge is 25-year-old cars and older that you can now import legally. The 25-year-old rule is a rule in the United States where if a car was never sold here, you can, if, as long as it's 25 years or older, you can import it into the country. So we gave ourselves $20,000 to find and import cars. And uh, so let's see what we found. Uh, today we have James Lippman, who is a contributing photographer to the uh, magazine and website. John Perley Huffman, who's a contributing editor and Casey Colwell, who's a regular on the show. Casey, you want to uh, show us what you bought? Uh, well, I wish I had bought something. I, I'm going to show you what, what I found. Brought. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just like messing with Tony. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll show you what I got. Um, so, um, and I'm, I, got, I, got, I got three here, but this one's going to go quick because these they actually sold these in, uh, in, in the US. It, it, these were sold here. Um, briefly, so, yeah. Briefly. But not this late. So I think they stopped in like 71 or 72. Um, and uh, this was just uh, in the searching for these cars. I'm going to go pretty quick through these. Um, a little uh, bit of rust there. Yeah, it was a little bit of rust, but, but I like the color. Um, and uh, I, I just, DSs are cool. and, and um, So cool. I would, I would kind of love, I mean, I remember when Aaron, Rob, Aaron Robinson bought one of these and then like toured through France. Yeah, our former coworker had it. He had an ID19 though, which is a little bit smaller engine, but it was in perfect, like restored condition. It was so nice. Yeah, um, but uh, you know, but he like toured. He toured the French countryside, and um, you know, this is just the perfect thing to do. I could. Oh my goodness! I just realized this. I could not imagine towing a tray, towing something with this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Europeans man. will tow with anything, won't they, James? But yes, that that has no power. That car. Oh yeah, no power, no power whatsoever. <laughs> what well, all the power goes to the pumps that power the uh, pneumatic suspension. Yeah, and speaking you know, of, yeah, the big bulb there. You know, the the look, if you look back at this guy's garage, he's got a really interesting collection of cars. Oh yeah, what does he have? Look, good back here, folks. Nope. Oh, yeah. he's got a Benz. A uh, nine twenty-eight. An AMA, like a Javelin, and a nine twenty-eight. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. He likes complexity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that was that was just a quick one. Um, I like that, Casey. You're over budget, though. Was I? Yeah, you're at twenty thousand. Yeah, years. yeah, it's all negotiable. It's all negotiable. That's true. And that probably includes Fair VAT. Enough. That uh, you know you get back. Oh, that you but, might get back. This yeah. guy's guy in Hamburg, Germany, and he has an AMC Javelin. That guy, this guy's cool. Casey, you've been shopping for a lot of golf stuff. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have. I love those targeted ads. Oh yeah, TGW's got me. I actually was thinking about ordering these New Balance, and then my buddy, my buddy said, "No, man, those are the most dad golf shoes ever." <laughs> All right. Next anyway, time. moving, moving, moving swiftly along. Um, uh, so yes. So I know. I mean, this is. I know. I've 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 had M3s on here before, and even you M3s. I think just once before. Well, E36 just once before I've picked, but um, the European cars um, are pretty cool because you can you can find them with cloth interior. They have this beautiful steering wheel. Yeah, those are the Vader seats in cloth. And the biggest thing is the engine, though. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't. I, well, and also, and I love that this one comes with throw pillows. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I pulled up a few of them just to show you pictures. Um, but uh, but yeah, this engine. So the engine in Europe um, uh, was much more powerful. Two hundred eighty-six horsepower over the two hundred forty. We ours had two forty and was like an enlarged version of the three twenty-eight engine. Yeah, and this um, and these were individual throttle bodies. So six throttle bodies. If you've ever driven a BMW inline six with individual throttle bodies, it, it kind of redefines um, engine response. And um, that's a beautiful. Uh, yeah, and it, yeah, and then you can also find like like odd colors and and stuff. And I also think that this car, 
um, is uh, these, these bump right up against the budget. Um, but um, you find a, a quirky European one and bring it to the U S and it's instantly worth more um, just for the engine. And then if you really held out, uh, you could, if for a couple of years um, in nine, so like uh, in 90, late 95, I think early 96, they switched to the 3.2 liter, which was 321 horse um, in, in Europe, uh, which is pretty amazing because then that's a, you know, over a hundred horsepower per liter in line six. Well, that's the engine that we would eventually get in the E46 M3 too. Weren't they also, didn't, yes. they, also use, didn't they also use like a closer ratio of transmissions and? Uh, yeah, they got, they got a six speed. They got a six speed in the, in, uh, in Europe with the three twos. And, really? Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is also, um, and you can also in Europe, the automatic, so in the U.S. we had automatic M3s, um, like just conventional planetary automatics. Uh, con yeah, but at a conventional planetary automatic, and then uh, but in Europe, uh, this is actually the car that launched um, SMG, I think. Oh, really? So yeah, they had so SMG and the E thirty sixes. I didn't realize. Yeah, that. yeah, I think I think yeah. Um, I'm not sure if it launched SMG for BMW as a whole, but I know I know it was available in the E thirty six. Those pizza slicer wheels on the M threes, and I guess they were in this on this in this. Country. Yeah, the Cuisinart wheels. I prefer. I much prefer. Um, oh, I made again. Those that, are the forged ones. Those are the forged ones, Casey. Those, those five. Uh, yeah. Five five. There's also. Can I? I don't think. I don't think any of the cars I pulled up had them. There's the ones that that have like way more spokes in here. Yeah, the cross the, spoke style. Yeah. Uh, and that's 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 my favorite wheel because I think. Yeah. I think that's but, the optional. This the one there is the split spoke is the forged optional wheel. They're pretty uh, cars. They're great cars to drive. I love. Yeah. Them. Yeah. They're just they're just lovely cars and. Um, you know, All right. What and, else you got? And then, and then, and then the last one. I'm I'm well under budget here, um, but this is um, <laughs> yes. this is a, a late a late '90s S8. So this is kind of this is. Oh uh, man! They never, sold, they never sold this in the U.S. No, no. Well, they, they never sold the manual. Um, they and, sold the S8 here. They sold the S8 here, but it came later. Um, never sold the manual. Um, it's and, got the beautiful uh, Avis wheels too. Oh, look at that interior. Yeah. So this is, I mean, for you know, Dude, is this, this uh, James? What is this? Is, what is this in quid? Um, but uh, it's like you know, nine thousand five hundred dollars or so. Ten thousand. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really um, this would be this, and this is another car where it's if you if you bought it, um, you know, if if you if you went through the trouble of bringing this here, you know, you could you could drive it for six months or even longer and keep it as long as you want. But as soon as you want to sell it, you just put it on bring a trailer. And oh yeah you would get every penny back it's got to be w one of the only ones in the country if not the only one in the country yeah there's probably there's probably yeah there's probably very few of them yeah and, the you know, S8, and also it's like what's that i was gonna say the s has got those polished um exterior caps. Mirrors and yeah yeah the, the only thing i always remember about this car is the uh well not the only thing but it's the is in ronin they had, you know, this car is the, the featured car in Ronin. And he goes, I need something with some heft to move, move things around, like an Audi S8. And there it is. Yeah. And he, I'll have the specs for the nitrous system. Yeah, that's yeah. right. He does. <laughs> I remember that line. Look yeah. That, interior, this, that is, uh, that's got to be, I know, I know it's not particularly interesting interior, but that's got to be the high point of, of Audi interiors. I mean, it's just so, like, austere and in German. Business, businessman, just fantastic you know, you know, my, first time driving this, my first time driving these cars was in germany with pat bedard first time i met pat bedard in germany driving the, these things when i was working for a competitive magazine Which Hurley, are, you, are, you sat, are you sat on your bed i'm still on my bed yes thank you very much are you wearing, uh, are you wearing a bathrobe <laughs> It's not a bathrobe. I think it's a sweatshirt. It's, you know, Tony knows this. I bought this in Colorado. It's from a Walmart in Colorado when we were doing a truck. Out of, okay, okay. Out anyway, of the so back to the essay. One thing I went back and I, I, I kind of, I kind of looked through the, the road test. So this road test. So we didn't get these until you know early two thousands, and uh, and the verdict was something that stood out for me is, you know, one of one of the galaxy's most competent and satisfying luxury sedans. And uh, you know, this was a John Phillips road test and. He would not have hesitated to scorch the thing if it was no good. So 
No, I remember driving those when they were in the press fleet. They're fantastic. They're really yeah. nice. that that 340 horsepower 4.2 makes a really nice intake noise. Like it's a really really good car. And with the manual, it would probably just blow me away. Yeah, this is one like I could I could definitely see myself flying in a in a different uh, travel environment, but flying to Europe with uh, with my wife and daughter, buying it and then and then importing it. Because you, you know, can rip around Europe in this thing pretty easily. Great find, Casey. The current yeah, SA is kind really of over cool. the top, but this one's so restrained. Totally. Oh, and they're, did I mention, and it's like, these are like aluminum space frame cars. These are just cool cars. Yeah. If, if you've ever been to the Audi factory to watch them build S8s or A8s, it's just one of the most remarkable things in the world to watch. Yeah. They're the first, it's the first generation of the A8, because the V8, the Audi V8 was before this one. Cool. Although now, what's, what's going on there? I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that's just an error with it. That's a, a smudge on the lens. It's just a nine thousand dollar repair. <laughs> um, anyway, so those are those are my cars. Those yeah. are my cars. Probably <laughs> probably more practical than. Uh, Casey, what does your shirt say? Uh, it says "Go Blue" in Japanese. Okay. This is like the uh, we're talking about everyone's attire today. All right, James. <laughs> um, What's the D James, stamp for on your hat, Tony? Really, stop. Okay. James, you're up. <laughs> you okay, I'm going to start. It's, it's, uh, I'll just go straight in on the pictures. Here we go. All right. James, you look really sharp. Are you, yeah, you, James, uh, you're talking about people's appearance. Are you on a movie set right now? What's going on, <laughs> Hollywood? <laughs> yeah. I don't own a webcam, so, and you can't buy webcams at the moment, so I'm using my work camera, which is plugged into my computer. And it is the world's most elaborate webcam. Well, if you ever want to become a cam model, I think you got the right equipment. I, I don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what have you brought, um, James? Well, I, I haven't. I, uh, see, when when you when we you suggested, you know, this the concept of this this uh, episode, I immediately went for this because I I've actually thought about importing one of these myself. I really like these. And um, the, I didn't realize you could, this would fit in the budget. I was, gonna, I was looking at a TVR, TVR Chimeras, which are in the sort of 10s, 20s, but- Is the Chimera reason, a smaller version of this car? Are they different? Um, are they completely different? A Chimera was made out of bits of this car. It's, this is a, oh, you've got me now. I can't remember the deal. A Chimera had like- cages on the bottom of the wheel. What's that? The one? Are there gauges on the bottom of the steering column? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, talk about that Audi interior. That's like the complete is opposite. That an, right? Is it's that an a, HVAC it's vent? A vent? Yeah. It's a vent. Oh, man. These are kind of like uh, British Vipers, aren't they? Like yes. big engine, lots of power, yeah, yeah. not very sophisticated, well, kind of kit car-ish. It's, oh, it, it's basically a kit car. It's, it's not, I wouldn't say lots of power. It's a Rover V8. So it's Br the British version of lots of power. Which oh, that's cool. the 4.2 that's in this is a Rover V8. I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But also, yeah. if you don't look at how, how far back the dash is, because the engines for these things are like under the cowl. Very cool. They push so far back that the dashboard is so far back because of the, where the engine is positioned. What's in this guy's garage? What's, what's he got? He's got a Catrum here. Yeah. And a tube frame door. I don't know what that is. Is it a Corvette? The guy's into it though, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, if you're on a TVR, you gotta be into it. Yeah, you've gotta be into it. So I don't love the front, but the back, the rear three quarter is just one of the best, and the side profile is it's just very one 90s. of the best. How much, is, how much does this one cost, James? How much well, is that glass weigh? I'm not saying, I, I was looking at Chimeras, they were, they were the right, they were in budget. This thing is, uh, let me look, this is, this on one's, eBay. How many quid? <laughs> a thousand quid. So probably so you're right up time. around twenty thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Whereabouts? That seems really cheap for this car. I don't know what's going on, but it's private. How many miles are on it? It doesn't matter because it's going to break. <laughs> and the battery's dead on on arrival too. Don't the these sometimes the rust out? Like, doesn't the frame rust out, and you have to replace the yeah. entire frame? They have these. Um, I can't remember they called outriggers that run from the from the chassis to the edge of the car and they all rot out because they were never I don't think they were even painted. Is there anything bed. in Britain that doesn't rot? It Is it rots. what? Is there anything that Britain makes that doesn't rot instantly? I mean Gotch. Just... Golf. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I love um, it. This is cool, James. It's very strange. Okay, very well, cool. Yeah, and I, I guess we should strange. also say that James James is 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 a uh, is a British expat living in LA, so he would be importing it to the U.S. Yeah, nobody would have figured that out by the way he talked. So, no. <laughs> I'm just, just well, people just, people might be like, "Wait, you live you live in the you you're, you're British? Why are you importing anything to? You're already there." I I don't love anything the British car industry's put out in the last forever. There just isn't anything. Except for this TVR. Except this. This is just so, I don't know what it is, but the guy in charge James, of the James, company, I think you need to tell everybody uh, the first car you bought when you, when you moved to the US. Here at Roadmaster. <laughs> <laughs> Which has a lot more power than this. And wait, what was the previous car you owned? Wait, what was the previous car you owned before the Buick Roadmaster? Uh, I had a VW Caddy. Well, diesel. I guess what was your what was your family car? Didn't, didn't you have the uh, like that uh, that three seat um, Toyota? IQ. Yeah, it's a yeah. Scion here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We went for a car from a car that was this long to a car that was three times longer. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. James, you're yeah. going to have to check out. We have a Roadmaster with the LT1 uh, road test up on the website today. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. that's a quality car. Right. Let me, I'm going to stop that share and go to. Wow, look at that. You look so sharp. Just thinking all of us look bad. It's an F18. Yeah. <laughs> so this is my second choice. It's a uh, Renault 5 GT Turbo. Yeah, this is a left hand drive one. So, um, so it was, uh, yeah, I, where, where to begin with it? These were basically grenades. You could, they had a 1.4 motor in them, it was turbocharged, and they made 120 horsepower. It felt like, a, felt like 600 horsepower in that car. Loads of turbo lag, built terribly, rattles and squeaks and atrocious but just so cool and so yeah that's exactly what you want yeah this is the yeah. second in, in the united states they call these the lacar the renault 5 is the lacar did this still have yeah. the three lug, did this have the three lug wheels like in the uh, lacar had no like no wheels. i think you got i think you got a fourth lug to keep the wheels on because of the power for this one. <laughs> that's deluxe that's that was just on the turbo i guess and, and apparently <laughs> they don't come with i think they have committed to four lugs by now but i i I don't know. I think the, you had to go two gens back for three. I can't remember how it works now, but but these were. I mean, I mean, I, yeah. This is a good. I don't. Example. I, don't, I, don't this is, this I don't. If you're thinking about doing, I don't import one of these. They're terrible. <laughs> they're just so cool. But they're you good. Selling it. <laughs> Your enthusiasm for it is waning as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> In real time. Yeah, these were what, the I, photos. James, go through the photos. Sorry, yeah, I flicked through the pictures. Unfortunately, these it hasn't got enlargeable pictures on this because the uh, that's, that's all okay. you get. In this car. But it's got a tire and it's got another tire. Yeah, that's uh, the left one is a Michelin MXV and the right one is a Yokohama ESV 100. You know, you spent <laughs> way too much time on the tire rack website, Tony. <laughs> so good. I just ordered tires from them yesterday. <laughs> It's your job to know this stuff, right? Funny, funny uh, story about tire rack. So when uh, when I was managing the fleet, you'd, we'd buy tires. You'd have to buy tires like basically every week. And at one point, I, most of it I did online. And then, you know, it was all like, you know, under my customer stuff. And at one point I called tire rack to work something out. And and the guy was like, all right, well, let me pull up your account. And, he, and you kind of hear him like, you know, you can hear his, his, uh, his shock when he sees all the, oh, all the various tires that I ordered. He was like, how many cars do you own? <laughs> but uh, I, I don't, I James, James uh, has rudely left us. Yeah, James is like, with the screen James James like, peace, I'm out. What <laughs> is he going to get a visual aid? I, I don't so. know. Why did he leave? He didn't even tell us he was leaving. All right. All right. Well, I guess um, we'll edit this out after. Casey. No, no, just no, no. Don't edit it. Just uh, un uh, unshare his screen for him. Moving right along. There he is. Oh, <laughs> why, James? You can't just. Leave. No, he didn't leave. It was like he was like. <laughs> I had pressing business to deal with. More pressing than this. <laughs> I had to go. I had to go and buy a chimera. <laughs> 
I just, it was just, I just couldn't. Did you, were, did you literally just buy that car? Yeah, I just had to buy it. I couldn't sit there and talk about this and not, and then be like, nah, I'll leave that. All right, James, you want, finish, you want to finish your R5 Turbo? You know what's crazy is James is crazy enough that he may be telling the truth. He may have literally just bought that car. <laughs> I really wish I had. When I started my career, I used to shoot for Tuna Max, and these were like everybody put body, body kits on these and stereos and all that other crap. I like and, the red carpet. Let's see more of the photos. Yeah. Yeah, they all had red carpet. I don't know what that was all about. Did they have red seatbelts as well? I mean, red carpets and gray mats. Yeah, it looks yeah. like it's good. Well, I love Renault, the way it's Renault. It's a Renault mat. You don't get a radio with this one. That that's not available. No, and wait, I like the way what, wait, what are the odds that ashtray has been used? Oh, hundred percent. There's probably like Galois in there. Is that just one of those radios that used to have the face plates that came off, so you couldn't get stolen? Maybe, maybe. Yeah, well, or, it doesn't look like there's anything there, Pearly, if you look closely. Yeah. It's got heel and toe. Look oh, at the pedal. Yeah. Yeah. It's got upper heel toe. <laughs> Do you remember the ones where you lift the whole thing out with the handle? Like yeah. the entire. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like you carry it around, yeah. Yeah. Just going to carry this out to the house. Oh, Casey, Casey, do you see that steering wheel? Uh, I sure do. What's that from? It looks. Uh... Uh, tell me. That Alliance GTA convertible I had. Oh, yeah. You owned one? You no. owned one? No, no. No, we had, on a we had on a previous episode, Burley. Don't, don't get too excited. Oh, jeez. Was... <laughs> <laughs> All right, James. Thank you. Sure. We'll kick it over to, uh, if you unshare, we'll kick it over to Mr. Huffman and see what uh, John Burley Huffman has brought us. Okay. Let's see. Let's share screen. And... There we go. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. This is, this, is, this is a car I love for a couple reasons. But Can you scroll down and show us the photos? Yeah. Is that it's a, first of all, I think it's just gorgeous. So cool. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's a car that would be relatively easy to maintain because all the parts are here in the United States. Uh, I like the fact that it's got the cloth interior and it's a five speed. It's only a, it's only a 316. Yeah. Are those the original seats? Yeah. Those are the original seats. I'm pretty sure those are the original seats. Original, uh, if you look at the, they match the upholstery and the, the door panels. Yeah, that's so cool. And it's got crank windows. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you, know, you look it's at it, it's kind of comfortable as well. It's also got the strangest cutout to to load it of any wagon I've ever seen in my life. I love that. Well, this was never designed to be a wagon. There was like an engineer who wanted a wagon, and he built it himself out of I think a wrecked one. And mm. then BMW, the BMW people and engineers and board ended up seeing it and decided to build it. Yeah. Well, I think it's a, I, I think it's of all the body styles uh, from the E30. I mean, you, the, the sedan was pretty good looking. The coupe was pretty good looking. The convertible's an atrocious pile. But <laughs> this is the only good, reason. The only well, reason Pearly said that is because Tony owns a convertible. <laughs> uh, this is a you know this is a th these are really the good, I found a lot of these. There's a lot of them around. There are a lot of them have been imported. Okay, uh, cool. And a lot of them have been modified, which makes me scared. And I like that this one has to be modified. And I want to speak up for one of the great joys of old BMWs, which was the less powerful ones were really sweet to drive. You didn't need to change, do an engine swap. You didn't need to screw it up. You didn't need to put a turbocharger on it. A keep one going through the photos. Over yeah, let's keep looking. Keep looking. These are really, they are good cars just as they stand. And That's very cool. How many miles are on this one, Pearly? Uh, I didn't even notice. Let me take a look. It's uh, this one, was this one was sold. This was on uh, Bring a Trailer, and it's sold. Right. And it's got uh, 194k kilometers. So that's 120. Okay, so around 120,000 miles. Very and cool. It looks like it's in great shape. Yeah, it looks great. This just looks like a wonderful car to drive. I mean, as a daily driver, it's hard to think of one that gets better than this. That's a great Radwood color too. That's a very like 80s, 90s color. And it's got a video of it. So. No, I don't want to watch the video. The video is not going to work. Video. Don't, don't, don't it shifts and everything. But anyhow, I, these are cars I, I just think that the best thing you do is get one that's stock and use it. Pearly, you had a BMW wagon, didn't you? Didn't you have an E46? I, did, I, I, had, a, I had an E46 wagon. I had a 2001 E46 wagon. And it's, it, when the second kid came, we just couldn't accommodate it. We ended up buying a minivan. But that was the best, the photos. It was the best driving car I've ever, uh, I've ever owned. Very cool. It's just a pretty car.
It is. I like those and the wheels. small bumper ones look terrific. Those basket weaves look terrific. It's just, and the small bumpers that we got here were just, or the, the old ones, were just so much better than what we had here. Yeah, the five. Well, we had we had these bumpers too, but uh, we also had the big five mile an hour bumpers. Yeah, just I mean, uh, now the thing is, my um, my next door neighbor Jay Reyes, who I've, now that I mentioned him, he has to watch this video. He had a he had a three twenty, you know, he had an E thirty that just was a miserable pile in a lot of ways. I mean, it's supposed to be easy to keep, but they already it, they can be really frustrating cars to to keep but i don't know this one i think would be worth it this is just why just, is that i mean mine mine's been reliable but i mean mine i have a pretty low mileage nice example but mine's been good and part parts are plentiful and they're not that expensive either i don't yeah, know you know i, I guess mine has no mine, miles and it's really mine, nice mine, a cabriolet i guess right. <laughs> humble brag <laughs> i mean you know of course it's the sucky one but that's okay um sucky at all i have a 325 i cab yeah 325 i cab i mean because you know you want to really it is it's got a strong 902 on 05 that's very I mean, at least he's got a collar pearly i don't know <laughs> oh, geez. all right uh what's your next well, sorry, yeah what else you got here uh okay let's see what's next is i like that oh yes oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, you wouldn't. We are hitting. We are hitting all the French notes. <laughs> if we're gonna go French, you know, this is one of the cars I've never driven. This is the 1.9, 1989. Uh, this one's actually British, so it's in Britain. But there's all, you know, they're all over the place. I have an amazing number of these cars all over the internet. If you want to buy them, this is a car that every magazine that ever drove one basically pronounces the best handling hot hatch ever. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, th yeah, it was basically the. I mean, it says right there, GTI, right? Yeah, it's a GTI. It's a 205 GTI. I just think it's a fantastic shape. It's one of the prettiest cars Peugeot's ever made. And this is the big engine one, because there was a 1.6 also, right? Or there's a 1.6 turned into a 1.9. Oh, is a 1.9 or a 1.6? This is a 1.9, cool. This is a 1.9. And it's no, like- No, also the red carpet. Yeah, yeah. Red, well, you know, that was, that's, that's, that's France for you. You know, they have to have, when they, they don't like, you know, every once in a while there's going to be a beheading and, you know, you don't want to make sure that the blood doesn't stain anything. I've never been to a burlesque show where there wasn't red carpet. Well, that's true. I've never been to a burlesque <laughs> show. Neither have I. Well, I've that's not true. It's all, it's all very Moulin Rouge. Donkey show. It's all very Moulin Rouge. I just think this is a perfect, this is a beautiful design. I mean, it's- I a, love it. I think they put that steering wheel in the uh, 405 MI16 too. Yeah, this, it's, I mean, the, yeah. The, the logo is very 80s. Uh, I, I've never driven one of these things. I want to drive one desperately. It, the only thing I think is, is that once you got it here, you would have to be, you know, air freighting parts from France every once in a while. Yeah, that's true. But it's, how, many uh, miles, how many miles? Oh, 150,000 miles on this one. This is a really, this is just a, it's just a neat car that we should have had. Been, that if Peugeot had done its, had been, you know, halfway decent at building cars, they would have sold here. Yeah, that's really cool. A former automobile magazine um, columnist and now road and track contributor, Jamie Kitman has one, Pearly. Oh, okay. Well, Jamie, I has just don't know where you'd where would you drive this in the U.S.? Uh, there's like a select handful of roads it should be good on, but it's built for a very particular type of road, which I think really only exists in France. And so, what, what kind of road is that, James? A fast, windy one. That it's would, got a have it's those here. That, that, road, that road <laughs> called Santa Barbara County, where I live. Yeah, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it work in California in the canyons, or is it too slow? No, I think it would, but you're just going to sit behind a Corvette. You know, where I live is called the, is called the California Riviera for a reason, you know, yeah. because we have roads just like France. In fact, we're France, but better. Uh, they're, so, so, they're, they're exactly like France, Pearly. I've been there. They're just exactly the same. That's, well, no, we're better than France. It's, it's, it's France without Frenchmen, so it's a little bit better. <laughs> no. No. I, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, in, it's interesting. I just, I just, I... I th yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, this cool car. And For also, the record, uh, John's opinion of Frenchman is is that of his own and not of current drivers. <laughs> yeah, and Pearly, you couldn't find a left-hand drive one. Why did you find this? Well, 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 but this one, I thought was a deal because it's only eight. It's only eight thousand pounds, which is about it is a deal. But then I have to shift with my left hand. Well, what else are you going to be using your left hand for, Tony? So you want to shift with it? I think it's. I, 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 there, there's plenty. Of, I, the, my problem was is that I was a little bit pushed. I would have gone and looked for it, but there were more in uh, 
There were more available in uh, France, and I just don't speak French, so I couldn't. Uh, it's a good number plate on it too. Yeah. yeah, it is. You know, you want to keep it. This is a cool. These are. This is a car we should have gotten here. You know, the, this came really close to getting imported into the United States. All right, thanks, Burley. Okay. Uh, I like your choices. You did a good job. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Cool. Okay, then I need to unshare. Yeah, go ahead and unshare, and I believe it's my turn. Can you guys see that? Oh. <laughs> yes, you can see it. <laughs> Why? You can never unsee it. Look at you want that, Tony. Nice Tony would you ever want that? Yeah, just out of curiosity. Four, four yeah, wheel. Go, go, go rent one. In, That's in true. You can rent them in Berlin, and I almost did that once when I was in Berlin for a day. Yeah. This is the saddest thing. I mean, isn't that expensive for a Trabant? Oh, yeah, but I mean, this is like better than factory. How, much money? How is it better than factory? Euros for a Trabant. Because I think they were pretty terrible right out of the factory. And I, I imagine oh, whoever has restored it. Deluxe edition, though. Huh? What does Deluxe get you in East Germany? What was the, what was the Deluxe? Probably fabric seats, maybe these headrests. Wait, wait a second. Huh. Is, this, is, this, is, this, is this one of the later ones with the VW engine in it? Or is this a no, this is actually a two stroke one. So um, here's the engine. Oh, oh we can't through. see the engine. There. Do you see the engine? No. 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 Oh, what the? Jeez. No, we had this earlier. We're getting there. This is a long one. Can you see the There's the engine. So it's the two stroke, uh, the 600 CC two stroke, 26 horsepower. Um, you feed it a fuel and oil mixture, just like any two stroke. And it's like a, um, Sorry, it's, got the tuned, it's got the tuned exhaust of like a go-kart, a two stroke go-kart. Yeah, or a snowmobile. Oh, those are expansion chambers. They use those on expansion motorcycles. Chambers. It doesn't have a fuel gauge. So you check the fuel in the, under the hood. It only has a speedometer. You want a fun fact about that expansion chamber? Yeah. That's a direct descendant of the V1 and V2 rocket program in World War II. Is that right? For real, yeah. The guy that invented that. Von Braun. Hmm? No, no um, kind of. It was, it's a, you have to look up MZ motorcycles and they yeah. were the first guys to use it. But anyway, I digress. Let's look at this piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> That is the best soundbite oh, we have ever produced. Ever have you seen the pictures? Are you seeing the pictures? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't make me think I want it. It makes me think, what is that? What's the book? You know, there's what? a reason. The manual. There's a is reason. Is this a matching numbers trabant? When, well, when the wall went down, they didn't say like, oh, wow, wow, well, we finally got trabants. Well, no. okay, but not a lot of them survived. And that therefore makes it weird and interesting. Uh, no. Yeah. Okay, okay, you don't like that one. I think you're gonna like this one better. My next car, I think you're gonna like better. Golf Country. Can you guys see that? The German version oh, yeah. of the Eagle. James, you don't like this either? No, what a, why would you ever do that? <laughs> you would be, if you bought this and put a ski rack on the top of it, you would be the king of Tahoe. I agree. I think this is so much cooler than like a Vanagon Synchro. And I think the four wheel drive is. is no, if this is what it takes to be the king of Tahoe, I don't want to be that. <laughs> uh, maybe not Tahoe, maybe Truckee. Okay. No. But this thing would be really, this would be really cool in a garage with an AMC Eagle po part next to it. That's I it. love it. I think it's a great, I'll, look at the condition. I think it's a yeah, great. No, this is day. pretty cool. Really I think nice. it has, did it have a low range in it? Did it have any sort of transfer case or anything? No. Or I, 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 I think it has a uh, torsion um, between the front and rear to send power. I think it's it just a synchro system in it. If it's a synchro system, it will last five minutes and then explode into pieces. It's totally not. <laughs> <laughs> I love these. The, it's got the 1.8 liter. These are pretty rare. Um, this one's sort of on the higher end of the market. I think it's, um, how much do they want for it? I think they want 15 for it. Where's the price? Do you guys see the price? It's also here. Okay. Yeah, they want 15,650 yeah. euro for it. Um, it's amazing condition though. It's perfect. Look. Did you guys ever get, you never got the Fiat Panda, did you? No, Tony, we, we, we can't read either. that. Tony, Tony, we can't Fiat read that. Fiat Panda, four by four Sizzly. That's what that is. It's just a bigger version of the same car. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is to me, I would so much rather drive this thing than any crossover that's out there in the market right now. Yeah, but that's, no, I don't want to drive anything except any of the crossovers that are out there. I mean, look, how, how slow is this thing, though? Let's be. 
It's got like a, a hundred or so horsepower or 90. It has the, I think the 1.8 liter that was in the GTI at that point. You know, the it's thing probably got like 90 weight gear oil and all the differentials. That thing's got to just like about. All right, it's 50 not percent of it makes it's it to the road. Not a performance choice. Neither of my choices are performance choices. No, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the listing: Estado de exposición impecable. <laughs> Golf cinco no, e. <laughs> Pocas unidades fabricadas. Fecha matriculación 23 de octubre 1990. <laughs> How international. <laughs> I love well, I can it. Actually, read the listing. It's no, got I, 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 it's got comes with twelve months warranty. Did you see that? Yeah, 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 it, yeah. Exactly. But the, and I'm, yeah, those yeah, but then you'd have to ship it, it back. back. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's broken. broken. <laughs> aren't, the, aren't the number plates on Mark II uh, are Mark II uh, Golfs usually on the tailgate and not on the? Yeah, board? look what they've done. Go back to the picture of it. They put like a blanking plate over the hole. Oh wait, hang on. It's, it is uh, in stunning condition. I mean, it's really nice. It's yeah. beautiful. I like the graphics. The graphics are very Baywatch. What's up, Pearly? The graphics are very Baywatch looking. I heard that. What would you say about the badge? Well, the badge is the, the lumber plates, uh, the license plates on these on second generation Gulls were usually on the tailgate, not on oh, the... Oh, right. But this has this, you, brush, this has the traditional bar with the... I don't think this is factory. Was that standard? I mean, was that standard or did no, they actually... No, 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 no. This is, so, this is yeah. aftermarket. This is aftermarket. So, so the guy actually moved the number plate down who owned it yeah it's part of this bar that they've added to it do you see with the with the tire holder with the spare tire holder so the spare tire holder was not something that was that was effective. that's aftermarket yeah okay that's aftermarket and also it's, it's nice that tony had to say that four times Tony. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry i'm not very bright james you know that some of the, james some of the commenters enjoy it, the fact that we have to repeat things a few times well, now the other thing is, is that you know this is the other thing is that we have to go look at this guy's garage. Look at all the cars on the, it's this thing. Yeah, it's at, it's at a dealer in Spain. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, it's at a dealer, a, like a collector car, classic car dealer in Spain. Yeah, I think this is so cool. It's got the original seats with the synchro. I mean, I don't know. These are just so unique and bizarre. Yeah, I, no, that's I, cool. I would enjoy driving it. Yeah, I I think I may have changed my mind on it. And here's the restoration. Oh, it's a restored car. Now, are they going to do, uh, aren't they bringing back the all-wheel drive golf now? Finally, we're getting all-wheel drive golfs again. Oh, I don't know. Are we? We might not even get the next golf. We'll just get GTI, right, Casey? Yeah, I think, I think there's, there's, a, there's a strong possibility that the, that the Mark 8 golf will not come to our market. But at all? Yeah, at all. Only the GTI will. Right. Yeah, because GTI right now is outselling it, I think, four or five to one. Yeah, they sell, they sell just way more GTIs than Golf. So it doesn't make sense for them to bring in the Golf with a different powertrain and put it through emissions and stuff. All right. Um, now we've come to the part of the show where we judge each other's cars. Uh, Casey, you went first. I think right? I did, yeah. Which of your cars do you want to put up for judging? Um, I think it, uh, as much as I, I love an E36 M3, it's, it's the S8 because that's... Uh, Hundred percent. That's what I'd actually, I'd actually go buy yeah, yeah, and that's own and drive. And, and yeah, it's, uh, and it was, it was like uh, ten thousand euros or less than ten thousand. No, it was like eight euros. Yeah, yeah. you and got, was, you got cool. money to bring it in, and money to repair it when it breaks. Yeah. yeah. What's the name of the actor who drove it in Ronan? I don't know. Uh, you know? Not Why? Seth or something. Something. Oh, I what thought you, you knew the answer. No, that's what I was asking. I'm trying to remember the name of the answer. The, the... Leave, it in the, leave it in the comments. Okay. And what was your favorite, what was your favorite car? Um, I, 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 I mean, uh, it's, be, it's between the, the TVR and that, um, and that Golf, that Volkswagen. I think I got to go with the Volkswagen because like the, <laughs> that's one I could also see owning and enjoying, um, you know, that's yeah, that, yeah, it's a Volkswagen. That's you a good could find. Be owning and not enjoying the TVR because it would just break. Yeah. No, it's just a solenoid a door actuator, so like I'd never be able to get in it. And you know, <laughs> I just kinda... it had that it had that vent on the bottom of the steering. I'd go, I go, to, I'd go to try and open it. The door wouldn't open. I'd just get in the S eight and leave. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right, uh, James. James, you went next, right? I did. 
What, which of your, uh, do you want to put the R5 turbo up? Uh, or do you want to put the yeah. TPR up for judging? Yeah, TPR. Man, I'm going to give it half. I'm a little scared oh. of it. I'm, I'll go with two. I'll make it up for everybody. Oh, Pearly's else. giving a thumbs down. for oh, I just, I just, you know, as, much, as much as I would like the way that car looks, I just know it would be a nightmare. And I just, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't say yes to a nightmare. That's ownership just, experience. All right, James, what's your, uh, everyone else's choices? What did you like the best? The SA. Yeah. 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 Choice. Choice. It's a good car. All right. Um, Pearly, did you go next? I did. Uh, I liked both of my cars quite a bit, uh, but I think of the ones that I would have that I'd actually want to drive every day, it would be the uh, E30 wagon. And I think that's, yeah. You're, you're, Sideways because of the one six. Yeah. You're just looking for validation for your own purchase, Tony. And that's all. <laughs> I'm not looking for any validation. <laughs> But, you know, but the thing is that you can get, you can find them all over the, with all sorts of engines. You can find 325s, you can find 320s. Yes, They're but I have to judge what you brought. I can't judge what was, what theoretically exists in the world. Also, I think I forgot to mention about the S8. It's not quite 25 years old. It's, uh, you're going to have oh, to wait like another. Good. Well, now, now we find out that you're cheating. I did cheat a little <laughs> bit. I did. And I, and I forgot yeah. to mention it. So, all right, no, fine. M3. Good. Everybody thumbs up. There, we're done. Okay. I win. And then what was your favorite of the group, really? Well, it was the S8, uh, <laughs> but now that I know that it's a cheater car, uh, I like that Golf. I really do. I'm sorry. Oh, I like cool! It. I'm glad you like it. I, I just think it's I, I think it's really a silly kind of, because I like AMC Eagles too, and I you know I, I'll go for anything like that that just that just stands out as being super weird but kind of cool. Yeah, it's to me it feels less AMC Eagle than like Backwoods lifted um, like Monte Carlo with a four wheel drive system. <laughs> Okay. I don't know. I, I, whenever I see those, I, you know, I, I always think the AMC Eagle is one of the cars that is, that, sh that everybody should, uh, should at least love because of it. Everyone should appreciate more. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to put up, it sounds like my, um, if I put up the Jabon, I'm going to get a lot of thumbs down. So I'm going to put up the Gulf Country. What do you guys think? James, thumbs up, thumbs down. Oh. You were yeah. starting, you hated it at first, but you were coming around to it. Yeah, it's a really nice one, but it's still a really nice golf, lifted golf. I, I don't know. It's not for me. No. I guess maybe because it was forbidden fruit here in the United States, I think it's that much more interesting. Although, I think that was the also, of all, of all the cars that we showed, that was the only one that was definitely went through a restoration. Yeah, it looked like it had been repainted and redone. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't know, you know, that one is, uh, that's, a, you know, for me, if it's, if it's a quality restoration, that's a good price for that much work in that thing. And then my favorite car, I got to go with KC's manual transmission S8, even though he says it disqualifies. So I think, uh, I think KC wins the day. I think you win. Nice. All right. Uh, thanks, James. Thanks, Pearly. And uh, thanks, KC. And yeah. uh, we'll see you all next week. Thanks, Tony. See ya. Yeah, thank you, Tony.